Hello, welcome to Lil's and Jewel. Today I have got a where to start and favourites video for all about uh, PG Woodhouse's Jeeves and Worcester series. So I've got a new journey with this series beginning because I've read all of this series books. Um, I've loved them very, very much. Um, if you have never read them, and you've never picked one up and you don't know what it's about. So Jeeves and Worcester is about, it's funny enough, these two men um, called Jeeves and Worcester. So we have Bertie Worcester who is a young man who uh, is cursed with too much money and he spends his uh, money on frivolous things, so whether it be fashion or alcohol. He's always getting himself stuck into problems that he can't really get himself out of. Um, sometimes caused by alcohol, sometimes caused by friends or family, um, but he has his right-hand man, Jeeves, who is his manservant, his valet, there to help him. Jeeves is a highly intellectual man, and he's very clever, very witty, uh, and he always helps Bertie, and sometimes his friends get out of stuff. So, I have compiled a list of five reasons why you should pick up a Jeeves and Worcester book if you haven't picked one up before. So in at number five is the aunts. So Bertie Wooster has um, a couple of aunts and these aunts are absolutely hilarious. So we have um, aunts like Aunt Agatha or Aunt Dahlia and they get him into a bit of stock, whether it be to go and steal a cow creamer or whether they're moaning about the fact that he hasn't taken a wife and he spends his money on frivolous things, whatever it may be, these aunts are absolutely hilarious because they're either moaning at him or they're moaning to him to go and do something. Sometimes the reason why Bertie Wooster ends up in a lot of trouble is because of the aunts getting him to do something, which is hilarious. At number four is this kind of creative age of P.G. Woodhouse's work. So the Jeeves and Worcester series is kind of always set in the 20s, despite not always being written in the 20s. It's kind of always set in that era. And it's a bit of a combination of um, P.G. Woodhouse's love for jazz music, along with like this schoolboy banter humour, along with 20s slang. It's kind of created this world in which Jeeves and Worcester sit. At number three, plots. The plots of these books can really vary and actually it could be something completely ridiculous but it's it just works so well. Um, whether it be say stealing cow creamer like I mentioned earlier that is a plot of one of the books random. Whether it be Bertie Worcester trying to get himself unengaged from someone that he's accidentally got himself engaged to. Uh, it's always fun. Uh, the plots of the novels are a little bit off the ball, but they work and are utterly hilarious. And number two, we have the relationship between Jeeves and Worcester. It is wonderful. If you've ever watched the series, uh, the ITV series of Jeeves and Worcester starring Hugh, Fl Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry, uh, the relationship, I mean those two were like best friends at the time anyway, but the relationship between those two works so well and that's what it kind of feels like in the book. They bounce off of each other really well. So Bertie Worcester's always getting himself into scrapes whether that be influence from friends or influence from the, his aunts. Um, and Jeeves is always there to help him and his friends out. I mean, Bertie Worcester isn't the sharpest knife in the box, but then you meet his friends and his friends are even worse. I mean, you've got Gussie Finknottle, who is like obsessed with newts. You know, it's, it's kind of, they're all a bit OTT. Um, and the relationship between Jeeves and Worcester is magnificent. I love the fact that Jeeves, despite the fact that he is, you know, Worcester's manservant, he kind of always gets his own way in the end. So whether Bertie takes up, for instance, a musical instrument, which Jeeves utterly detests and said, not doing it anymore, sir, and off he goes, he ends up getting rid of the music instrument in the end. Or um, Bertie, he, he spends his money on the most bizarre things, Fashion is one of them. Um, so he gets influenced by something and he goes and buys something which Jeeves thinks is utterly ridiculous. And then Jeeves gets, gets himself out of trouble because of course in the book Bertie gets himself into trouble. Jeeves ends up getting out of it and um, Worcester goes, oh, just for that you can um, get rid of so-and-so. And Jeeves is like, I already have. It's wonderful. I, I just love it so much. And um, especially the things like um, the special tonic that Jeeves does uh, for Bertie um, in the morning when he's got his hangover and just, they just work so well. You know, um, the banter of um, 
that they just oh it's it's just wonderful and you you really can't appreciate it until you read it it's fabulous but i do have to say the number one thing the number one reason to pick up one of these books is for the language never in my personal opinion has there been a writer uh, in english history able to put one word in front of another and make someone laugh in the way that pg woodhouse does his work is utterly hilarious it's just so rhythmical. Um, he he writes, I would say, similar, similarly, it's going to sound a bit strange, but to Agatha Christie. You know how Agatha Christie is um, quite rhythmical in her writing, quite clear? It's the same with Woodhouse. It's, he's very clear and concise, but it's absolutely hilarious. I, I don't know how he does it, really. Well, I do know how he does it, because he read an awful lot, um, and he was influenced an awful lot, but his work is just so funny and it's kind of this bantery sort of tone that he's got to it which I just appreciate so much. I, I often find myself actually laughing out loud, um, chuckling myself away while I'm reading one of his books, it's wonderful. Um, I sometimes take pictures of certain lines that I really like so there was, um, oh there's been so many but there was one line about someone looking like a gorilla which I found hilarious obviously it's not when I say it because it doesn't make any sense um but there is also a line um uh, about Bertie being woken up at about 9 30 and he's like jeez is the house on fire or something because he doesn't wake up past 12 usually um it's just hilarious so funny pg woodhouse is just amazing and to be honest that is the best reason why I should pick up one of these books because it's just all those combination of things works so well. So hopefully I have now tempted you to pick up a Jews and Worcester but where is the best place to start and also what are my favourite books. Now I'm actually combining these because the place to start are my favourites. Now I do have to say that of PG Woodhouse's Jews and Worcester series I think the lowest I've given a book is three stars. So you know most of his work either gets a four star or a five star from me i just love them the places to start actually i would say with two books um so start with carry on jeeves and the inimitable jeeves both of these books are collections of short stories so in this one we actually have the meeting between jeeves and worcester um but they are both marvellous they're so fabulous and funny and short stories means that you can kind of read one and if you want you can carry on reading or you can just pick it up in between your other reading I do actually find that I just whiz through them really quickly and read it all within a couple of days they're not the biggest books and um, they're just so marvellous and it's wonderful um if you get to pick it up for the first time you'll really enjoy it I know you will uh, because if you're watching my channel you probably might my taste in books and I love them. Um, I would also say they're quite British in humour. It's very much on that line of British humour. So if you like British humour and British comedy, you will like this. It's as simple as that. Um, I do have to say that P.G. Woodhouse was someone who was really appreciated um, as a writer with his talent at his time, which I think is absolutely marvellous. And I think we should carry on um, regarding his work as utter geniusness, because that's what it is. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you've been enjoying talking all things PG Woodhouse's Jeeves and Worcester. In the comments, please chat to me all things Jeeves and Worcester. Maybe you want to talk to me about starting it for the first time. Maybe you want to talk to me about the fact that perhaps you've read all of PG Woodhouse's works. I would love to hear from you. So that's it for this video. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next one. Bye for now.